God said it. We've been talking about that all year so far, and we're going to talk about it all the way to December. God said it. We have God's spoken word in, in all of creation. When, when God revealed himself in creation, he spoke it all into existence. And so what we see around us is why I love grabbing a leaf and say, there's proof of God right there. Right? You see, God said it. He said, let there be light, and there was light. God gave us his written word. This is, this is his word. This is the word of God, Genesis to Revelation. I'm not allowed to pick and choose, and neither are you. We are not editors of God's word. This is the word of God. We read it. We, we, we discern it. We let God's spirit illuminate it for us to give us understanding and how it it leads us and guides us in life and then we have god's living word which is jesus and and the god said it messages actually are meant to take us from creation to glorification all right from from the point at which god spoke it all into existence we've got the creation we've got the fall we've got sin we've got we've got a couple abraham and sarah and 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 the covenant message that god gave to abraham and sarah that that uh I will make of you a great nation and, and give you a land and, and you will be out of you will be a blessing to all the nations. And, and, and so we see the covenant and the couple and the family and the people and the nation. And out of the nation, we see the king. First of all, we see David who, who was given the promise of, of out of you will be a lasting king. We know that to be the king of kings, which is Jesus. And so we get to the Savior and the body of Christ, and and the whole Word of God is about Jesus, okay? So when we stop today to look at, at, at a particular individual, we're looking into 1 Samuel chapter 25. This is a character that when I look at him, I go, I know that guy. Nabal, who knows Nabal? See, very few people, thank you, Tim, very few people know Nabal. (laughs) Nabal is just one. All right, so have you ever run into somebody that, let's be nice, you just didn't particularly care for? Anybody? Of course we have, yes. Of course, we run into people that just like, eh, right? Well, Nabal's that guy. Okay, so here you go from from 1 Samuel 25. I'm going to read from 28 to 35. Then I'm going to tell you the story. Here we go. Please forgive your servant's offense. Now, this is Abigail speaking. This is Nabal's wife. I can't tell you how many times wives have to apologize for their husbands. All right, here you go. Please forgive your servant's offense, for the Lord is certain to make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because he fights the Lord's battles. Throughout your life, may evil not be found in you. This is Abigail talking to David. All right, David's running from Saul. David's got his, his, his mighty men, his, his 600 to 1,000 guys following him, and, and he's hiding out from Saul, and, and he approaches, and I'm going to tell you that story in a minute, and, and, and Nabal acts like a not nice guy. There are a couple of children in the room, so I'm being careful. Someone is pursuing you and intends to take your life. My Lord's life is tucked safely in the place where the Lord your God protects the living. But he is flinging away your enemies' enemies lives like stones from a sling. When the Lord does for my Lord all the good he promised you and appoints you ruler over Israel, there will not be... There will not be remorse or a troubled conscience for for my Lord because of needless bloodshed or my Lord's revenge. And when the Lord does good things for my Lord, may you remember me, your servant. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who sent you to meet me today. May your discernment be blessed. May you be blessed today. You have kept me from participating in bloodshed and avenging myself by my own hand. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, who prevented me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, Nabal wouldn't have had any males left by morning light. Then David accepted what she had brought him and said, Go home in peace. See, I have heard what you said and have granted your request. Pray with me, all righty. 
Father, I want to thank you and praise you again that we get to hang out together this morning. But, but God, the most important thing is, is that, that we walk near you. God, we want to be close today. We, we, we want to hear you move among us and speak to our hearts. And God, I thank you for your spirit and, and the way, God, that you lead and guide and speak into our hearts and lives. And, and God, show us what you revealed in your word. Because, God, we need to know you better every day. Help us to get a little better glimpse of you today as we consider this guy, Nabal, and his wife, Abigail, and David. And, and God, as we think about the promise of the King of Kings, and we see David's life. Thank you, God, for your love for us. Help us to love you back and act like it. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Nabal. Man. All right, so there's a word that I really like. It goes all the way back to Genesis and Cain. Remember, after Cain killed Abel, God shows up and says, and this is an English translation, why has your countenance fallen? Know that word, countenance? Do you ever see people, when, when you just just approach and you look at them, and, and you can just see it written all over their face, that things aren't going well. You know, and you want to say to them, you want to go, excuse me, why has your countenance fallen? Anybody ever use that line? I didn't think so. Nobody, nobody walks up to somebody and asks that question, right? But we do oftentimes say, are you okay? What's up? Anything wrong? How are things going with you? Well, see, Nabal is this character in David's story. Now, remember, David's running from Saul. He's, he's trying not to kill Saul, to be honest with you, because he's had one opportunity and is going to have another opportunity to kill Saul. And yet he continues to refrain because Saul knows that God's rejected him. And David's already been anointed in, in 1 Samuel 16 to be the next king and ruler of Israel. And so David's just trying to be righteous and godly and not kill God's anointed Saul. You're going to read in the chapters ahead, ahead if you're walking through the Bible with us on the Bible Project app or, or if you're reading the Bible through by some other method. You're going to see this progression as David is making sort of the steps in the direction of being the king that God has appointed and anointed and, and called him to be. And so here we are in, in this area of Carmel, and this is this is sort of the story. I didn't give the booth these verses, but I want to share with you just a, a few things. And I just want you to listen to it, because here's what I want you to do as you read this. I, I want you, as you hear these verses, to form an impression, okay? This is the Word of God. God breathed it for us, thank you, Tim, to, to hear what God wanted to wanted us to understand. This is what it says, a man in Maon had a business in Carmel. He was a very rich man with 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The man's name was Nabal and his wife's name Abigail. The woman was intelligent and beautiful. <clears throat> but the man, a Calebite, now it's interesting that that's mentioned and I'll tell you why in a minute. A Calebite was harsh and evil in his dealings. All right, so you got, got a picture in your mind, right? Got a picture of Abigail, beautiful and intelligent. And then you got Nabal who is harsh and evil. Can, 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 do we know these guys in our, our, our society today? <laughs> yeah, we do, Right? And I, I, he mentions Calebite because remember Caleb? Caleb's the 82, 83 year old guy that said, Just show me the land that's mine and I'll go take it. Caleb's one of the faithful 12 spies that went into the land, right? Caleb was a faithful follower uh, of the Lord God. And, 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 and this man, Nabal, is one of his descendants and is not. A faithful that's why they I think that's why it's mentioned that he's a Calebite is because there's a there's a th this sort of juxtaposition of the one who followed God and the one who's not who is harsh and evil folks we have these people in the world around us 
So David coming into the area of Carmel, uh, he's got all the soldiers and everything, and, and he's been in the area moving from place to place. And, and there was a time while they were in the area that David actually protected and guarded Nabal's flocks and, and herdsmen and shepherds and all those kind of things. He guarded them and, and didn't let them get assaulted or hauled off or any of that kind of stuff. And so it, it, it's come this time of, of a festival in the land, and he sends a message to Nabal and says, how about... Uh, feeding my men there is a a rule of hospitality in the culture there Naboth says uh who is David who is Jesse's son many slaves these days are running away from their masters am I supposed to take my bread my water and my meat that I butchered for my shearers and give them to these men, I don't know where they're from. Man, this is Nabal going, hey, y'all, it's all about me. My stuff, my wealth, my everything, and I don't have to share. So, so you, you kind of get this picture of, of Nabal's countenance, right? Uh, he's not in any way grateful for how he's been blessed. There's no gratitude in this guy. There's nothing there that acknowledges anything of God's blessing. It's mine, mine, mine. I did it. And folks, we live in a country and a nation and a culture that absolutely has this attitude. We did it. Pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Now, in, in Christ, in the body of Christ, in faith, we understand we're blessed by God. But if you get out here in this culture, man, you'll get stepped on, run over. Right? All right, so, so there is this ingratitude. That there is this inhospitality. He is inhospitable. He, he is not a caring person. He, he, he's not even acknowledging and recognizing what's going on in, in his community. I mean, obviously they know who David is. Obviously they know uh, that there is this sort of, dare I say, political conflict. Right? And Nabal is this guy that is just this obstinate... I did the, what's the last one? Show it to me, Kylie. You ready? He's just mean. He is just mean. Right? And I'm going to show you how you know he's just mean. You got to hear what his wife says about him. Oh, my goodness. You know, I did a men's thing once upon a time. I said... You want to get better acquainted with yourself? Give your wife the opportunity to tell you what she really thinks of you. Woo! The safest way to do that is to go buy her a brand new composition notebook and let her write it down. And then you spend the rest of your life reading it. Okay? Okay? You, you, I mean, that's the thing. I, people say to me, and I, you know, I laugh about it and really want to make a joke. People say, oh, yeah. I'm hey, I'm Bobby. Yeah, they let me be a pastor down at the gathering. I'm surprised, yes. And they go, oh, I've heard of you. I've heard good things about the gathering. And I go, or they'll say they heard good things about me. And I go, yeah, but you haven't talked to my wife. You really need to talk to her, right? See, Nabal has this this identity and it's not a pretty one I mean God's own word said he was harsh and evil okay all right so so when we look at this thing we're we're talking about this Nabal character now if the if David has an expectation of a festival hospitality then David rightfully has an expectation that, that Nabal in his wealth and all this kind of thing has the, the, the capacity to be able to bless David and his army. But he doesn't do it. 
So if you're David with an army, how do you right wrong? <laughs> you go take it. You just invade the country next to you. I didn't say that. Got a video at the end of the service today, just so y'all know. See, yeah, I just want it. So I go take it. Well, David is preparing to go and take it when all of a sudden Nabal's wife shows up because one of her servants, one of Nabal's servants went to Abigail and said, you're not going to believe what Nabal just did. He, he, he just told David that, that pfft, forget it. Abigail prepares wagon loads of food and, and, and breads and grains and all these things. And she takes them to David and says, Abigail hurried, taking 200 loaves of bread. Man, that sounds like a, a sunbeam truck. That's what I grew up with with sunbeam. Two clay, oh, wonder bread. <laughs> Two clay jars of wine. Now, these are 80-gallon things. These are not like, you know, little pitchers. These are big jugs of wine. Five butchered sheep, a bushel of roasted grain, a hundred clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of pressed figs, loaded them on donkeys. Then she said to her male servants, go ahead of me, I'll be right behind you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. You know why? Because she knows her husband. Okay? Okay? Verse 24, it says, she knelt at his feet, meaning David's, and said, the guilt is mine, my Lord. But what? The guilt is mine, my Lord. All right, is it? I mean, ask yourself the question. What is she doing? She's substituting. You're going to know why I'm bringing this up in a few minutes. She's standing between her husband and judgment. See that? It's important. I'm just making that note. The guilt is mine, my Lord, but please let your servant speak to you directly. Listen to the words of your servant. My Lord should pay no attention. Get ready, men. My Lord should pay no attention to this worthless fool Nabal. For he lives up to his name. His name means stupid. I'm reading from the Bible, y'all. I didn't make this up. And stupidity is all he knows. It's in the Bible. You know, usually when kids are in the room, I try not to use that particular S word. But I'm reading the Bible. Abigail is a, a gracious, loving, kind, generous individual. She places herself in between what is certain to be David's judgment and her husband. And, and, and calls the guilt her own. Guess what? Two Sundays from now, we're going to celebrate the resurrection. Substitutionary atonement. Jesus took your guilt and your punishment and your sin. He stood between God and our judgment. See, that... that I, Honestly, I don't know why I even need to know who Nabal is, except for that point right there. You want to know what this is about? Yeah, sure, Nabal's got plenty to eat. Nabal is a wealthy man. Nabal could have supplied probably half the countryside with food on this festival occasion. But because he was mean and stingy and selfish and harsh and just downright evil, his wife had to step in. See? All right, so, parallels, you ready? 
because we are selfish, because we are downright evil, Jesus stepped in, stood between us and judgment, and took the punishment. Now, there's all kind of big old theological words that go into this 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 action on God's part. I've used the word substitution. They refer to the atonement as the substitutionary atonement. The propitiation, the satisfaction of God's wrath against sin. God never hated a person. Okay? But he is wrathful about sin and evil. Okay? That's so why over the course of, of our, our walk through the Bible and the gathering in the Word, daily devotional things that get emailed out, uh, I've I put in there several times, sin is serious. We live in a culture that's not very serious about sin. Well, I want to be a Christian or I want to be a follower of Jesus or I want to be faithful or I want to be obedient, but but that really makes me happy, so I think I'll do that. Well, that really pleases me, so I think I'll do that. Or or that's just who I am. I think I'll do that. Right? That's the culture we live in. Man, you can't read a single news article and not find that. The world has gone crazy. It's upside down. And, and if the prophet's words were never true, in our society alone, we're calling evil good and good evil. So then we come to God's justice. Simple statement. God is just. What does that mean? It means that he always does the right thing. He always is righteous. God is always right. Okay? Right? So, so a lot of people want to say, well, well, wait a minute. God's love. So, so God would never send people to hell. You're right. People send people to hell. Okay? A lot of definitions of just and justice, and so I, I, I printed a few things out here. When we choose evil, God freely allows us to have the consequences of evil. It's biblical. You reap what you sow. Okay? God punishes sin. Now, what does that mean? That means God would be unjust not to punish sin. I love it when I have couples sit across from me in my office. Hmm? And, um, and uh, I'm down this path, so you're going to hear it. You ready? I have a couple sitting in my office, and let's say they're not married. And I'll say, tell me about your relationship. Does it honor and glorify God? Right? Inevitably, what happens, we come down to it, do they both got their heads like this, and they go, we're living in sin. I go, I'm glad you admitted it. What are you going to do about it? Right? I mean, I say it all the time. God cannot bless sin. Can't. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the right word. Won't. God won't bless sin. Okay? Just won't do it. So... What will God do about sin? God punishes sin. So so where's the punishment? Okay? I think there are consequences to sin. As a matter of fact, I think that sin brings its consequences and, and God will indeed forgive sin because of the shed blood of Christ. He 
But the consequences oftentimes linger. Guess what happened to Nabal? He died within just a couple of days. At his own party, had a stroke and died. David didn't have to do that. He didn't do it, right? I'm not saying it's cause and effect. But Nabal reaped what he sowed. He was an evil, harsh man. Okay? It's a tough message, y'all. But the point today is, don't oppose God. Don't be in opposition to God's will for your life. Don't, don't, Don't be in opposition to the walk that God's called you to. When God reveals himself in his word and, 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 and explains his word to us and for us to understand that, yes, we are very much like Nabal in the fact that, that Jesus stood between us and ultimately the spiritual judgment that is going to come on this world. God stood, I mean, Jesus, God stood between us and took the punishment. But that doesn't give me the freedom to act evil and harsh. God wants us to live out the righteousness that he's he's clothed us in. He wants us to live out his spirit within us that, that always seeks to lift up the name of Jesus. Man. Confession, you ready? I've been Nabal. I've been that guy. Right? I've been spanked for being that guy. God has disciplined me for being that. Okay? God has shown me when I was harsh, when I wasn't gracious, when I was ungrateful. God has shown me when, when I, was, I was not nice. Right? God has shown me. Now, I say all those things in the negative. God has shown me when I was unloving both to him and to others, right? So I went for a walk run yesterday morning, and I was stopped by a young lady. She was riding her bike. She knew me. I knew her. We began to talk. I said, you know what? I've been saying this for quite a while now. We as the body of Christ are supposed to be first and foremost, ambassadors in this world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not the gospel of, of whatever else. And if I start listing lists, I'm going to offend some of you. We're supposed to be out here living Jesus in our communities. We're supposed to be out here loving people. Yes, even sinners. Right? Even those we disagree with politically. Even those that we disagree with medically. I wouldn't have ever said that before 2020. Even those we disagree with on other... Now, we don't affirm sin. We don't okay people's bad behavior. But we are supposed to love people. Okay? So, yes... See, we're supposed to go out and and let people see Jesus in us. Okay? Man, that's what Abigail did. She jumped into the line of fire and said, the guilt is mine. We know from the story, she didn't bear any guilt in this. 
but she stepped in between Nabal and David. Okay? Folks, there's somebody you're going to run in today, into today. Gas pump, grocery store, restaurant, walking down the street. Think ahead of time how you can be loving to the person you don't know. How you can share God's love just in a word. Think about it ahead of time. Okay? And love the people you come in contact with. Because it's it's by and through that love that God can give you the opportunity to talk about why. And the why is Jesus. Okay? Pray with me. God, thank you. Thank you that you are faithful. And thank you that you are true. And thank you, God, that you meet with us in this place to to show us who we are in Christ. To show us our, our yes, to, to, to give us a mirror. To look at the things that need to be changed. And, and God, you, by your spirit, are refining us. And, and, and God, you're growing us. And, and, and God, I thank you that you have a purpose and a plan for us. Every one of us. God, help us to pay attention when you speak. Help us to listen to your word. God, help us to obey. God, if there's someone this morning that recognizes some sin in their lives, God, help us to understand that sin's serious. You you don't just ignore it. God, I pray today that we would understand exactly who it is you've called us to be as we represent, as we show Jesus to a dark, lost, dying world. God, help us to be right reflections of the light that you've given to us in Christ. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.